How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Dynamic Projectiles video. In this video, I want to add variable jump height to our player. I think that this is another cool platformer feature that we can add, and it's something that you're going to want to put in all your games because it's kind of standard. And what that really means is when you're holding down your jump key, your player is going to jump a little bit higher than if you hit your jump key and then let go, it's only going to jump so high. It's not going to go to its max height. So what we need to do is we need to actually look at our behaviors again. So let's click on our player and let's go to our platform behaviors here. And let's actually take a look as to what they are. We have our max speed at 100, which is our actual movement speed. And then we have our acceleration, our deceleration, but then we get into the jump strength. And now our jump strength and our gravity are directly related. So our jump strength right now is at 300 and our gravity is at 1500. And our gravity, as it says here, accelerates at pixels per second. So what we want to do is we want to hit debug and we want to look at this actual, we want to look at this happen. So let's actually mute this and let's go to our object player and let's look as to what's going to happen to this platform. Let's look at our gravity. Let's look at our jump strength. Let's look at our vector Y especially. So our jump strength is set to 300 and our gravity is at 1500. So if I hit the jump key, you can see here that we're going to hit 300 and then max out there if we can even get to that close. And let's see if we're noticing anything else happen here. Nothing else is really happening. But what happens if I actually tweaked our gravity? What happens if I turn our gravity down from 1500 to something like 800? And let me hit save there and let me hit play. And let's see what happens there. Whoa. Okay, so you might not be able to tell because of the lack of debug that I did not hit, but you might be able to tell uh, that our character is jumping a lot higher with a lower gravity. So hopefully that makes sense to you logically, but what we're really doing here is we're giving our player more hang time because there's less gravity being affected to him. So now when we hit our vector Y, you can see it's going even higher than it was before. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually control our jump strength and our vector y position so we can actually leave our jump strength at 300 that shouldn't be that much of an issue here but we can also lower it if we have to but the one thing that we have to change here is our default controls we don't want our default controls to be at yes we want them to be at no and i probably should have done that before because in our keyboard event we were controlling this by simulating it and in reality it was still set to default so it was already doing that the only thing we were doing here was setting it to mirrored so what we need to do here is we need to actually control our vector y position and to do this there's actually a function for it or an action for it let's go to our add action go to our player and let's set the vector y so we're going to manually set where we want it to cap at so i'm going to put this to around negative 200 and hit okay and now let's hit debug and let's check this out again let's go to our player when it loads let me mute this the muting thing is coming in handy because otherwise you can't really hear me. So let's look at our vector Y. And now when I hit jump, oh, you know what? Hold on. <laughs> I actually have to, uh, hmm. Now that I turned that off, I need to actually reset our jump controls here. Let's do that again. On up arrow pressed, this needs to be there. Oops, my bad. All right, let's try this again. And let me hit debug so I can actually view this. Let's go to our player, view this. Let's go to our player again. And let's look at our vector Y position. And let me hit jump and there we go so you can't really tell because we're kind of capping out and then dropping down but you can see our vector y going up and you can also see our y position going up in general so we've actually lowered it and just by setting our vector y cap to negative 200 we've completely lowered our jump height which if we didn't have that it wouldn't be there and that's when we actually press the up arrow key now to make this more variable, what we can do, we have a few options actually. And what we wanna do first is we wanna see what happens when we release the arrow key. But since even though we're only pressing it and this is only triggered when we press, otherwise if this was on down, the audio would just play over and over and over and over again. We need to check to see if it's not down. So let's do this. Let's add an event for our keyboard and let's say key is down and this key is our up arrow key because that's what it is and let's invert it. So let's say if our up arrow key is not down, then what are we gonna do? If our up arrow key is not down, then we're gonna, con we're gonna control click this and we're gonna set it to something like negative five. Or you could even go a little bit lower, you can go a little bit higher, it doesn't really matter. You could even divide this in half if you wanted to, uh, whatever feels right to you. But what we're going to do here is we're going to enable it so now when I lightly tap, you can see, you can see what's going on there. 
uh, it's not it's not actually working. We have a few more things to fix here, but you can see that it'll only go so high. So if I hold this all the way down, it'll go to the max. But then if I let go, it won't. And now we have something weird happening there. So let's figure out why that's happening. The reason why this is happening is because we're not doing the additional checks that we need to. We need to actually add in a few more conditions just to make sure that these events are fired off at the right time. So the first uh, condition we want to add here is for our up arrow press, we want to make sure that this player is on the floor. We want to hit C on the keyboard there. And we want to say if our object player is on the floor, then we can do that. And for this, we want to do exactly the opposite, but we don't need to do it on the floor, although we could do it that way. We want to know if we're jumping or not. We want to actually go to our player and we want to find out if it's true when the object is moving upwards, in, in this case, jumping. So that should fix all of our bugs. Let's hit debug here and let's look at it again. So let's mute this. Let's go to our player and let's look at our vector Y here and let's hit jump. And now if I just kind of lightly tap the button, we're not going as high as we can. I think we're stopping at like 121. And if I hold it all the way down, we can go even higher. Now, what happens if we increase this number? If we put this to like, say 300, we should actually go ridiculously high, probably higher than you're gonna want to go to. But let's see what happens here. Let me mute this again. There we go. So if I really hold this down now, I can actually go that high. But if I just kind of tap it here, you can see that it's detecting that I let go and that it's detecting that I'm jumping. So it's going to let go. And there we go. That's some variable height. And you can see our camera's actually adapting to that as well, which is really nice. That's a really nice thing to have because the camera has that little lerp function and it's delaying when it comes down that's nice to have as well. So all of this goes together and I hope that you learned a lot from this variable jump height video. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, leave a comment if you liked it. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer you and make sure you give this video a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander and I'll see you in the next one.